Hey guys, this is Bluff Monkey back with Sonic Academy for another set of videos. In this series of videos, we are going to take a look at the top 10 overlooked plugins that are included within Ableton Live. So these are plugins that come standard with Live. Um, and I don't know about you, but I tend to go for the same plugins over and over again. There, there are a few favorites I've got with Ableton Live, and these are EQ8, which I use in everything. Um, I tend to use it just for high pass and low pass. And then I will often just use the high shelf as well. So I don't tend to use it for surgical editing, uh, but sometimes I do. I tend to go over to Pro-Q for that because it's a little bit more intuitive to use. Uh, but blah, blah, blah. Uh, the next one is Ping Pong Delay, which I adore. I think this is excellent. I use this in everything. Very easy to use. It sounds good. The filter is nice and easy to use quickly. And then we've got the standard compressor and the glue compressor I use in most projects. And then the auto filter I use a lot as well. But this, this is not what we were looking at in these videos. So I'm just going to get rid of these. You've probably got your own favorites. I'm just going to get rid of this channel for now. And I've got a couple of uh, channels set up here. The plugin we're going to look at in the first video is Utility. Now, I don't think Utility is overlooked as much as it is underused. There's a couple of really good functionalities on there now um, that I am trying to get into the habit of using for everything. Now the first one would be the gain control. This little control here, so we can go plus 35 dB or minus infinity down to nothing. And I'm just gonna have a quick listen at this drum loop I've got set up. So what I used to do is I used to automate volume using the mixer channel or the mixer. So we'd come over to track volume and I'd go something like this. Yeah, okay, brilliant. Look, I can put all my automation in there and that's brilliant, isn't it? So let's have a listen. That's great. So all my all my uh, volume is automated perfectly now. But the problem comes when if you've got a channel in a track that's five or six minutes long and the whole channel is covered in automation, if you then want to raise or lower the volume, the overall volume of that channel later on, it becomes a right pain because you have to go in and adjust all the automation highlight all the automation, pull it all up or down at once, and it becomes incredibly tedious. So what I tend to do now is, let's just delete this automation, delete automation, is I will use this gain control instead. So let's just move this so that we have it auto as an automatable parameter. So now what we can do is we can put in as much automation, volume automation as we want. Let's just put anything in. Let's have a listen. And it still allows us to come over to the mixer channel and we can still use the volume slider on the mixer itself to pull down or increase the overall volume of the track. So you can you can use the, let's bring this back to utility. You can use the utility gain to set your volume automation across the entire track, but still have fine control of the entire track or the entire channel in that track's volume. So this is a habit I'm really trying to get into at the moment. It's It's really easy to, just go for the volume slider again and again and again, but you're gonna kind of create problems for yourself later on, or that's what I used to do. So that's one way of using utility. The second way of using utility, or the second way I'm gonna show you in this video, this is a bass loop I've got set up. Let's just bring the volume down a bit because it's a bit loud. And this is a new addition for Live 10, is you've got the bass mono channel, or the bass mono functionality. Now, a few years back, I used to use a plugin called, I think it was TP Bass Lane. It was a free plugin, but it was 32-bit only. And what it allows you to do, and what this functionality allows you to do, is to set a frequency or choose a frequency. So it goes down to 50 hertz and up to 500 hertz. And it allows you to, anything below that frequency is going to be switched over to mono only. It's going to become mono only. And what we can do is we can use this little icon here. I think that's a headphone icon. Is that a headphone icon? What this is going to do is solo the frequency or the, the audio below this frequency. So you only hear what's below this frequency. So let's have a listen to it in the context of this bass line. Let's just switch on. So what you're hearing here is all the content below 196 hertz from this original bass sound. Just switch. So that's the original, and this is the f this is the content that we're turning mono. So 
So you could use this for kick drums, you could use this for bass lines or even certain pads that have got a low, lot of low end content. You don't necessarily want anything below one or 200 hertz to have stereo content as well uh, because we find it difficult to place it anyway and it, it, it creates a much tidier and a much tighter mix when those lower frequencies are monoed, especially down in the sub bass range, you know, below 50, 100 hertz. So those are two ways that I use utility now. These are habits that I've really trying to get myself into. Um, that's the first plugin in this series. I um, hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.